We're making a Rolex watch and blender this is episode three today. We're going to make the hands, the numbers, and a couple other things on the face here. We're not going to waste any more time on an intro. Just make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see the next episode when it comes out. Now let's get started. Let's make a little game plan for how we're going to make the face of this watch first. First, we got to recognize all the different parts of the face of the watch. For example, we got some hands over here. We got some Roman numerals that go all the way around the face. We got a hole here, which reveals the day of the week. We got another hole, which reveals the date. Then we got a little lens on top of this part here, so you can see what's going on underneath. And then we have some other details here, like the crown and this text here, and this little circle that goes all the way around. We're not going to model that part. These parts we're going to create later on with some texture maps. And when we get to the texturing and the texture maps in the next episode, I'm going to explain to you why we're using that approach but for now let's just model the parts that we can model and then we're going to get to that later so let's start with the roman numerals first of all we have to select this reference image here i'm going to place my 3d cursor to the world origin and i'm going to use my 3d cursor as a pivot point so i can rotate this image and i'm just going to rotate it like this so i get one of these roman numerals aligned with my axis here and now shift a i'm going to add a little plane i'm going to scale that down i'll set my pivot point back to medium point because it's just a little bit easier to work with it in this case and now we're going to scale that down a little further bring it up to here make sure you set the right width here you're going to take this edge and lift it up on the y axis and now let's just give it a little bit of thickness so we're going to extrude it up like this with control r i'm going to add a loop cut right here so click and then right click and then just select this edge on top and use g and z to lift it up a little bit with alt right click select the entire edge loop but deselect the edge on top and press x dissolve edges that's going to get rid of these edges that we have around here in the front and the bottom and that's just going to make it a little bit easier to bevel this shape now i'm not going to bevel this yet i'm going to start adding bevels when i create all the other roman numerals because i want to add the bevels at the same time and that way all the bevels are going to be exactly the same width and they're going to look nice and consistent so duplicate this move it to the side somewhere over here now we're going to go back to 3d cursor we're going to rotate this image a little bit further so we get this x here and now we can just take this number one that we created earlier select the face at the bottom use g and x to push it to the side a little bit like this select the face at the top and push that to the left a little bit and now this is where things get a little bit interesting you want to place your 3d cursor onto this face at the bottom in the middle here and then you're going to go shift d right click scale this to minus one of the x-axis that's going to invert it and now if you go to top view you can see that that's aligned with this line here but we still got to make these little cuts here now you can't just use a knife cut here because you're not really going to get the right angle and you have to be very precise because you want these cuts here to be perfectly parallel with this edge over here so instead let's take this face from the bottom with p we're going to separate that by selection so now it's a separate object then we're going to select this object on top select these two faces on the sides here shift d right click p to separate that by selection as well so now we just separated these faces into a new object and then just go top view and edit mode you're going to press alt e and you're going to click on extrude faces along normals that's just going to push them outwards in the direction of the normal line or in the direction which they're facing and you can just push them outwards a little bit like this until you get to the point where you have to make the cut so now you have these bars right here let's lower them a little bit further down because you know we're about to use the boolean modifier and it's really important that you make sure that your normals are correct when you do this because if your normals are inverted the boolean modifier is going to fuck everything up so to check your normals you're going to go up here to viewport overlays here you're going to find a button called face orientation that's going to show you the direction of the normals so if you see anything red that means you got a problem that means you got to select that object edit mode and press shift n maybe it's control n for you or maybe you gotta go mesh normals recalculate outside here but anyway now we can select this face down here go to the modifier tab add a modifier generate boolean use this eyedropper to select these bars which we created here and you can just apply that modifier delete these two bars also delete this surface over here in the middle we don't need that and now we're just going to extrude these faces up a little bit i want to line them with this line on the previous object let's join these back together into the same object and now we can just throw that to the side and get to the next one next i want to make the v so we're going to place that right here and to make that we can just duplicate the x we can bring it back over here to the middle with l we're going to select and delete this little shape at the bottom here take this geometry down here you're going to push that to the side a little bit to around here somewhere but we can't really use this here to create this shape so we're going to have to do the boolean thing again because this is a different angle different width and everything so let's place our 3d cursor onto this face at the bottom of this shape down here pivot point has to be 3d cursor select the face at the bottom of this shape shift the right click you're going to scale that to minus one on the x-axis and now again separate this to a new object duplicate this face separate that to a new object take that new face and extrude it out a little bit and you know the drill now you're going to use your boolean modifier to cut out this little shape so now we got this shape here so i'm going to extrude it out a little bit to give it a little bit of thickness and there we have our letter v so so far we got the i the x and the v so we got everything we need now we just have to arrange them in a circle we have to place them correctly so we're gonna have to construct each of these numbers one by one and then we're gonna place the sets into the right location so for example i want to have vi down here for six which means i'm gonna take my v i'm gonna place it over here then 
and I'm going to duplicate the one and I'm going to bring that right next to the V to here somewhere. Now use Shift S to place the 3D cursor at the world origin so you know it's exactly in the middle of the watch. Select the two numbers like this and you're just going to rotate them by 180 degrees. You might want to shift them sideways a little bit so they match the reference image here. And now just do the same with all the other numbers. So we got this one right here. We're going to duplicate that and place it over here. We got to do the same thing on the other side here. Let's bring our number 10 over here to the side. We got another one here for nine o'clock, another one down here for seven o'clock. Now let's duplicate the VI from the bottom shift the right click. We're going to bring that over here. And now we have to get some more ones over here. And it's really important that we did the rotations here in object mode, because if we rotate the object in object mode, then you change its local axes, which means now you can press something like GXX and you're going to move the object along its local X axis. If you're not familiar with this, this is one of the tools that I talked about in my blender course. There's a bunch of different tools like this that you got to know. A lot of people tell me when they watch my videos are you and you're moving too quickly. This is like a time lapse. You got to be familiar with all these tools if you want to watch tutorials like this. If you're not familiar with the tools, then you're gonna have to pause the tutorial every five seconds and it's gonna be way harder to do anything. So make sure that you familiarize yourself with the tools first and then you can go follow in hard modeling tutorials like this one here. So if you need some help with learning all the different tools, you can check out my blender course. The link is in the description. Otherwise, if you don't want to buy nothing, just make sure that you familiarize yourself with everything. You got to do your homework on this shit. So go to edit mode, learn about all the tools that you have on the side here, learn about all these different menus and all this different shit that you have here. Ask chat GPT to name a hundred different blender tools and then do your Googling for each one of those. Just do something. You got to learn as many of these as possible. If you want to get good at modeling, there's no other way to do it. So now with G and double X, you're going to move this on its local X axis a little bit, just to set the right distance between the one and the V here. And then you have to go over here to modifier tab, add modifier, generate array. And notice how the array modifier is not applied to the global axis. It's applied to the local X axis. That's why it's not stacking to the left. It's stacking in this direction where we rotated the object. That's why local axes are so important. So in the array modifier, you're going to set the count to three, hold down shift and just reduce the X factor to something like this. You might have to use your 3D cursor here to adjust the angle and the position of these numbers. But now you can duplicate these three ones and you can bring them over here to the other side. You can see we definitely fucked something up with the angles here. So we're probably gonna have to do this again. Maybe I'll just take this one from up here. I'll duplicate that and bring it down here somewhere. And once again, add modifier, generate array, set the count here to four and just move it along its local X axis to around here somewhere, increase the X factor a little bit. I don't know if the distance between these numbers here is the same as the distance between these here. So fuck it. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm just gonna do what looks right to me. You can do it differently if you want to. And I'll just copy this object. Now you want to have a number two up here. So place that up here. And there you have it. That's pretty good for now. I'm probably going to adjust these later on off camera. I don't want to sit here and spend 15 minutes just making tiny adjustments to the position of these numbers, but you get the idea. Now, before we make the hands, we probably want to make the surface for the face first. And to make the surface for a face, let's add a circle, which is going to have something like, let's say 256 vertices. You're going to scale that circle down about this size, extrude that inwards. And you want to bring this little circle all the way down here to the middle here. And now we know where we're supposed to place the hands. So let's make the hands first, and then we're going to stack them on top of each other. Here's a little picture I got from Google. It just shows you the hands for a Rolex watch. Now this might look pretty simple to you, but I don't think it's quite as simple as you imagine it to be. Now let's add a circle here and let's start with something like 32 vertices here. We're going to use a subdivision surface modifier here later on. So we're going to make this a lot smoother. And I think we kind of fucked up by adding the face here. So I'm going to move that to the side because otherwise the geometry is just in the way and I can't see shit when I'm in wireframe view, but scale this circle down to the right size. So something like this, and maybe it's a good idea to rotate the reference image again so we can make sure we have the right proportions for this hand here. Now you're going to extrude this and scale it inwards a little bit like this. Take one, two, three, four, five, six edges from the top and extrude them up to here. You want to scale this edge segment here to zero on the Y axis. You want to make sure that that's flat. And you also want to scale it down a little bit because it's supposed to be a little bit thinner up here. Now we're also going to take six edges from the bottom and extrude them downwards as well. You're going to straighten this out by scaling it to zero on the Y axis. And there's your hour hand. And now here's the most important part that you have to take care of. Here. You're going to place your 3D cursor into the middle of this object, into the middle of this circle. Select exactly one half of this surface like this. And then you're going to go over to the side in edit mode. When you press T, you're going to find this tool down here called shear. You're going to click on that. And then you're going to take this bar from the side over here. And you're just going to tilt that downwards a little bit. You don't want to tilt it too far. You just want to set the offset here to something like minus 0.1. And now with your 3D cursor in the middle, you can just press control I delete the other faces, shift the right click scale to minus one of the X axis and merge vertices by distance. And now just extrude this down a little bit like this to give it some thickness. Make sure to correct your normals. Make sure to merge your vertices by distance and there's your hour hand. Now, like I said, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier here, but we're going to have to use some bevels. Let's not do that just yet because I want to make the minute hand first. I'm not going to walk you through the process of making the minute hand again, because it's the same shit as the other hand. So you can just do it yourself. And now to make the second hand, I'm going to add a cylinder, which has 16 vertices. We're going to scale that down, rotate it around the X axis before you scale it up on the Y axis to make it long. We're going to
gonna select the bottom half. We're gonna delete all that geometry, fill in the edges to make a face at the bottom and the front and the back. Take the back, you're gonna bring that to around here. Take the top, you're gonna bring that up here. The top has to be a little bit thinner, so I'll place my 3D cursor on this edge, use my 3D cursor as a pivot point and scale this face down a little bit. And now over here in the middle with Shift A, you're gonna add a circle with 32 vertices, scale them down to around this size. Extrude that up so it's just over the top like this and add a loop cut here. And now select this ring, add modifier, generate Boolean, you're gonna target this shape. It creates a little bit of a mess, but apply that Boolean modifier. You wanna delete these faces on the inside here. And now once again, just a little bit of very basic Boolean cleanup is gonna help us take care of this properly. Make sure to do the same thing over here on the other side. And now we can select these two loops here, bridge edge loops, select the face at the top. You're gonna extrude and scale it down a little bit then go up here to face grid fill. I'm gonna adjust the offset a little bit so it's aligned with the axes. Now take the top, you're gonna fill that with F, extrude that, scale it down a little bit. You're gonna push that downwards a little bit like this then extrude, scale it down a little bit further. Then extrude it up a little bit like this, scale the top down a little bit, inset this area, delete the face on the inside. Once again, you can go up here, face grid fill. And now you can join these two objects together. You're gonna select all the sharp edges. If you're trying to do exactly what I'm doing in this video, then just take a moment to look at the edges which I have selected here. You're gonna select the exact same edges and also select these edges in the front, the back and the bottom of this hand here. And with control B, you're gonna bevel those. You want that bevel to have two segments and a shape value of one. I'm gonna uncheck loop slide in this menu. And now I can add my subdivision surface modifier with control one or two to make that look cute. I'm gonna go over here to object shade smooth. On the minute and the hour hands, you also have to select the same edges which you see that I selected here now. So just take your time, take a good look at what I have selected over here on this hand. Control B, I'm gonna add another bevel here. And then once again, subdivision surface modifier, object shade smooth. The topology is not perfect here, but it's not really worth changing it because it's good enough. Now I'm gonna select every last one of these fucking numbers that we created here before. With control B, I'm gonna make a little bevel in all of those as well. But this time you have to make sure to make your bevel in face select mode because that way when you create the bevel, you're gonna have only the bevel selected and not the faces in between. You want this bevel to have, let's say three segments and a shape value of 0.5. And now you're gonna press I for inset, then press O for outset and just hold down shift to create this little boundary around these bevels. Then go to object shade smooth. If you want to, you can add some subdivision surface to these objects too. And now let's just stack these hands on top of each other. So first we got the hour hand, then we got the minute hand, then we got the second hand. You might want to add some kind of a cylinder to act as a hub here. Now let's bring back the face for this watch and then we just have to cut these holes at the top here. So I'm gonna add a loop cut right over here. Control B to bevel that loop cut, turn it into something like this. Now select the faces that I'm selecting over here. You're gonna inset those a little bit. Make sure to press O when you inset because previously you had that set to outset. You're gonna lower that down a little bit on the Z axis, extrude it down a little further, X delete faces. To make this cut here, you probably just wanna use a cube, use that with a Boolean modifier. Make sure to shape that correctly so it's gonna be something like this. Add your Boolean modifier over here, target this cube, apply the Boolean, delete the cube. This is probably completely fucked up our topology, but it doesn't really matter. The amount of time it would take to clean this shit up is just not worth it because it's just a flat surface. It's not gonna give us any problems. Extrude this down a little bit, scale it down a little bit like this. If you do have some edges which are packed very tightly together, you just wanna slide those to the corner. That's just gonna make it a little bit easier to take these edges on the outside and bevel them a little bit. And of of course, the reason I want to bevel this is so that I can get some nicer shading on these edges later when I add smooth shading. I think that's enough for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to start adding some of the tiny details here with the textures and texture maps. This is going to be the type of shit that they use to add details on video game models. So it's a pretty important technique. So make sure you subscribe to the fucking channel, like the damn video too, and let me know in the comments if you managed to follow along this tutorial so far. I know this shit was probably pretty hard. If you got to watch it a couple of times, then go ahead and do that. But just remember, this shit is really hard to make. It takes a lot of very fine techniques to do this, so I can't really try tried to slow this down because otherwise the video will be two hours long. So if you got any questions about anything I did here, just let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.